I often hear people say things like, oh, I could never be a politician. I feel like the world is going to hell and ultimately it doesn't really matter what you do anyways. Now, in this video, I'm going to tell you why I chose to be a politician and uh, why I would recommend other people to be involved in nonprofits or in political organizations or to pursue a career in politics for themselves. First things first, I don't really think politics should be a career. I think it should be something everyone does for a certain amount of time. I dislike the idea that we have certain people who were raised and educated into politics and who spent the rest of their lives in this world because I believe a politician should be a representative of the people and ultimately that means you should know what it's like to have a normal job, to live in the world around you and to be where other people are. Now, a lot of people like to complain about how dumb modern politicians are. There are countless articles online about stupid things that politicians have done. And so, of course, because of this, a lot of people would rather stay out of this environment, right? Because ultimately, everyone there seems to be an idiot, right? And what's the point? And why should I waste my time dealing with these kinds of people? Well, the truth is, you're going to be dealing with p idiots wherever you go in the world. You'll be dealing with idiots at work, you're going to be dealing with clients, with customers, and with friends and family members that are going to say and do stupid things. And this happens all over society, and politicians are no unique souls in this kind of a world. They are not particularly idiotic or stupid, it's just that the media prefers to and is supposed to write and share the information about what's happening in the world and especially what's happening with our elected officials, right? Now, I chose to get involved when I was 12, right? You heard that right. So when I was 12, I came to my first political meeting for the Social Democrats of Sweden. And there I was, two heads shorter than everyone else, looking up at all the new people and everyone else looking down at me wondering, are you lost, little one, right? Now, to me, the idea of politics was immediately fascinating. A chance to talk about ideas and society and about the environment and about the world around me. Who wouldn't be interested in that, right? I mean, the chance to learn new things, to think about politics, economics, philosophy, life and happiness, and how to create a good world for everyone. Shouldn't we all be interested in this? Aren't we all ultimately interested in some form of politics? I think while a lot of people will say I'm not really interested in politics, most of us do care about what happens in our local environments. We'd get upset if somebody decided to reroute our favorite tram or metro, and we'd be annoyed if politicians decided to change something about the, you know, how a post is delivered or what if they decide to raise your taxes, right? So a lot of us will have a lot of opinions about what happens around us. And of course we do care. We care if there's a war happening on the other side of the world. We care if there's poverty, we care about climate change or about some other issue. Not everyone cares about everything, but every single person in the world cares about something. And so really all you have to do is think about what it is that you care about and what you're interested in. Now, for me, that was an easy choice. I'm interested in everything. I'm interested in people and I'm interested in the world, right? So I wanted to know everything about everything. And so for me, politics was the perfect arena for me to channel my curiosity and interest in learning. So I started attending meetings and I started getting involved. First in the Social Democrat and later on, I moved to more environmentalist organizations because I grew particularly fond of issues such as peace and sustainability. And to me, it became really interesting to work with global issues like poverty, right? Now, I did a lot of things when I was in politics. I, I learned how to write opinion pieces. I got submitted into newspapers. I got to deliver speeches. I got to attend school debates and to represent my political party at public places. I learned how to recruit people to organizations. I learned, uh, I recruited hundreds and hundreds of people to different parties and organizations during my time. I attended festivals all over the country, got to travel. I got to go to places I would never have been able to go to before. 
I got the chance to be a spokesperson and chairman, to learn to be a secretary, to take notes, but also to be the leader of an organization or a group, to be the one that leads the meeting, to be the one that prepares everyone for something, to be the person that creates an environment or a sphere for people to have discussions. My time in politics was a rich and dynamic time in my life, and I look back to it very fondly. I spent about 10 years in politics, and I loved every minute of it. Sure, there were difficult times, and yeah, there are times when politics can feel draining and exhausting. Yeah, sometimes you'll get hung up on the wrong causes and the wrong ideas, and you'll spend a lot of time working and fighting for something that doesn't really yield any results. Sometimes, like anyone else, you can get caught up in populism. You can find yourself simply waving your fist at anger at the latest group that you can bully into submission, right? You start feeling like uh, you and your group is so much better than everyone else and that every other group is wrong, right? And it's easy to fall a victim to these kinds of cognitive fallacies. So after all, we're human and it's easy for all humans to sometimes be misled by rhetoric and emotions and personal experiences and insecurities. And so to me, the political sphere is very much a human sphere. It's a personal sphere because we bring our personal experiences and worldviews to this planet, to this place, to this arena. And so a lot of the time when we talk about feminism or about environmentalism or about capitalism, a lot of our personal insecurities will come to the foreline, right? And so we might talk about our own experiences being poor or with women or with men, and we might be putting and projecting this into how society is or how the world should be. And a lot of the time these opinions are wrong. Now, a lot of people might have criticisms against the whole idea of politics and democracy to begin with. After all, why do we let people that are stupid and uneducated have an opinion at all? Now, the idea of democracy doesn't necessarily come from the idea that every single person's opinion is correct. Of course, that couldn't be possible. Of course, some of us are wrong while other people are right. Shouldn't we just have an intellectual society where the smart rule, where the educated decide, when where people who have the privilege of knowledge get to choose how society should be run? The reason why I would say I'm a proponent for democracy and for uh, the ability for humans to bring forward their own opinions is because ultimately it's a, something that you can find very strongly in nature around you. Democracy mimics a lot about how nature works. And let me explain what I mean with that. Nature and genetics and biology is often an experiment. Different kinds of life forms have evolved, all with different needs, different opinions, different thoughts, and different preferences. So we have different kinds of animals and life forms across the world. But also, humanity is very diverse. Every single person is wired differently. We have people that are more sensitive, people that are more introverted, people that are more extroverted. And, of course, we have people that are more naturally competitive, while others are more inclined to cooperation. And, of course, that's why we have all these global conflicts today. We have liberals, and we have socialists, and we have all these people who believe the world would be so much better if the world functioned according to their needs and their personal preferences. Yeah, people that are more inclined to be collaborative are more inclined to be on the political left and to be more positive towards socialism. And, yeah, people that are more competitive and ambitious are more likely to be on the political right. And often we tend to project and believe that our personal view and how we are wired to the world is how the world should be, right? Now, to me, democracy is about being representative. What that means is it should represent the opinions of the people. And that means that everyone should be involved in the discussion. And by everyone being involved in the discussion, we can maximize the amount of ideas that reach higher institutions. With that, what's going to end up happening is if everyone is involved, Yes, we're going to have a lot of stupid ideas. We're going to have a lot of people with ridiculous beliefs and op outdated opinions and simply incorrect things. But we're also going to have a lot of really interesting ideas. And a good society is allowed to have an open debate where we can exchange these kinds of ideas and learn from one another. What's going to end up happening is a democratic society is going to outcompete another society because over time, it's more likely that the mass of people who have all put forward their opinion in a ballot 
are going to land in the right answer than that one person, one dictator, is going to be able to land in the right answer. And often when societies move towards uniformism or dictatorships or fascism, that might lead to prosperity in the long sh or short term. But what might have hap end up happening is you create a very extreme society which only benefits a few amount of people. And this kind of society might be very homogenous to the point where it will become very sensitive to alternative ideas and changes in your environment. Yeah, while your idea that you have might be great right now, is it going to be great in 10 years? Is it going to work in another society? Is it going to work and be able to address a new kind of problem? problem. Often, when we have more ideas in the world and we have multiple different people and viewpoints, what ends up happening is, yeah, we create a more versatile and dynamic society that can survive different kinds of outcomes. And hopefully the most prevailing idea is going to be the ideas that are the least populist and partisan, right? So the worst thing that can happen to democracy is that democracy becomes the voice of the few. So the fewer people are involved in politics, the more likely it's going to fall prone to populism and partisanship. What's going to end up happening is only a few people with a few set of opinions are going to put their opinions in the ballot. And so a society is going to be gradually starved on good ideas. And maybe they won't even appear in politics and in society and national discourse at all. So, what ends up happening in this kind of a world is that, well, first of all, people will start attacking one another and will be less multicultural, right? We're going to have a lot of misconceptions about one another. We're going to have a lot of misunderstandings about different groups. Some groups are going to be isolated from the discourse, while others are going to lead and dominate the discourse. And ultimately, it's going to lead to a less representative society. That means that the politicians that we elect are going to be fewer and are going to be from very specific groups in society, perhaps high income, perhaps only academics, perhaps only white, perhaps only from a certain culture. And so ultimately what ends up happening is the debate stagnates because we only get one opinion. And this opinion can often become gradually more stereotypical because groups tend to feed on one another. When you only hang out with and interact with people who are just like you, what ends up happening is you tend to spiral into more and more dangerous and extreme versions of that idea in order to compete with other people in your group and to stand out across a lot of people that all look like you. You have to be the most extreme and radical voice in that group. Yeah. Sound familiar? That sounds a lot like the world we're headed towards today. Yeah, because less and less people are involved in politics, which means that politics and politicians become more and feel more stupid. It's less likely that you know a politician today than that you knew one 50 years ago. Yeah, more people were involved in the past, which meant that politicians were closer. That means that if something happened in the world that you were unhappy with, you knew a politician who you could talk to about it and you could get a better understanding of why it happened and what you could do about it. But today, politicians are further away from the people. And yeah, that's going to have consequences. It's going to make you feel like you're not involved, like politics is further away from you. For me, my time in politics was an amazing time. And what led me down the road to begin with? The first thing that really drew me into politics was my interest in philosophy. Philosophy addresses the idea of how society should be run. And to me, I started wondering a lot about things like climate change very early on in life. I wondered what would happen and how far it would go, and I wondered what the different threats were for humanity. I thought about how to build a better tomorrow and how to build a better future, and what we could do to help people who are suffering in the world. I saw like there was a lot of poverty and a lot of war and a lot of conflict, and I thought, what can I do to be a voice in the right direction. And of course, while philosophy is a great breeding ground to learn new things and to think about things, ultimately, you also want to be involved. You also want to feel like you're making a difference and that you're doing something good for the world. And politics gave me a chance to do that. Often people will think that politics will make you more unhappy or more miserable. But science has found the opposite. People that are involved tend to feel better than people that don't get involved. Yeah, people that don't get involved in politics, never have been involved in politics, tend to be more afraid and more anxious about what's happening in the world, while people that are active tend to feel that they have a constructive way to express their opinion, and that they have friends and other people they can talk to, and that they can make a difference. 
And that feeling is important and crucial to be able to manage negative emotions about the future. Now, how do you even get involved in politics? Well, there are so many different organizations to pick from. And here you might think, I don't really fit in any of the parties or platforms that exist. Well, I'd say the best thing you can ask yourself is, which platform is the best tool for me to use to get my opinions true, right? A lot of the time people will say, oh, maybe I should get involved in the opposite party of my own so that I have a chance to be maximally influential. I'd say in general, the best thing you can do is partner up with other people that have similar ideas to your own. While working together with other people from a party that's similar to your own or as similar as possible to yourself, you'll have a better chance of getting heard and feeling seen and understood by other people. And here, what ends up happening is your ideas have a chance to become reality. Yeah, if you just express your opinion and nobody agrees with you, you're not going to make much of a difference. But if you express your opinion and other people start agreeing with you, what ends up happening is, yeah, your opinions start spreading in society. And the more popular an idea or a meme has become, the more likely it's going to become one of the predominant means of society. And it's going to end up maybe even one day becoming some kind of uh, rule or law in that society, right? Now, I have firsthand been able to change the laws of Sweden and to be able to come up with opinions that have inspired and have changed what the Swedish society looks like. I've written several proposals to the Green Party and to the Social Democrats and both, both local issues and national issues. And I've been elected into local government in Luleå in Sweden, but I've also been a person who has influenced the opinions of other people around me through different pieces that I wrote. That's led to Sweden becoming slightly different. And so I can say firsthand that I've had a direct change in how wor the world works and how things are. And yeah, if that isn't proof of the positive influence that you can make in politics, then what is? I'm currently not involved in politics. And the reason for it was because I wanted to learn more about people and I wanted to focus more on psychology and sociology. I wanted to be more involved in learning how people work and how often different groups work. I might return to politics one day, but I'm happy to have a break from it as well. While politics is a really good place to be, I think nobody should be there forever. And ultimately, there are way too many politicians in there that have been there for way too long. So they could definitely use a hand. And often, if you get involved in politics, what you're going to find is they're going to be desperate for you. They're going to be they are, they're going to really, really need you because there are fewer and fewer political people today. And people that are involved in politics are a sparse resource. And whenever somebody shows up with initiative and ideas, that kind of a person has a chance to get elected very quickly and to get the position in the party and to be involved in things from a very quick time. Just be careful that you don't take on too much and learn to remember to set your own boundaries and manage your own time. Ideally, you probably want politics to be something that you pursue alongside your regular everyday career and hobbies. You want it to be something you can spend a couple of hours with every week, but not too little and not too much. You want to feel like you have some things that you can do to make a difference, but you don't need to feel like this thing has to be something that you dedicate every minute of your life to. Yeah, if everyone in the world spent a couple of hours every week, I think the world would be a lot more different than what it is today and a lot better. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments down below if you're involved in politics and what you think about politics and politicians. Thank you and see you all in the next video.